President Bola Tinumbu last week and even yesterday charged the 45 newly inaugurated ministers to prioritize the interest and welfare of the entire nation and its diverse population above any regional or state-specific considerations. He also emphasized the immense responsibility the ministers now bear in shaping policies that will significantly influence the livelihood of hundreds of millions of Nigerians. Well, let's focus on the coordinating Minister of Economy and, of course, Minister of Finance. And I'm being joined by an economist, Dr. Uh, Tokpe Fashua. Dr. Fashua, good afternoon. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, thank you very much, Tolu. It's good to be here. Yes, a lot is set out around the economy, considering the challenges that we face at this time. And President Tinumbu is clear he wants the ministers to perform and ignore every other thing and get to work and perform. Some say this really won't be a tea party. What are the challenges you see moving on? Thank you very much. I think we're getting the right messaging from the president. And uh, I think uh, quite a number of the ministers are also primed to perform. And of course, their work is well cut out for them. Uh, you saw the GDP numbers that came out recently. Um, we fell short of expectations indeed. That means that, uh, well, this will be expected because it takes time for government to form. Uh, we're forming a new government, which is uh, a tough call uh, to begin to uh, morph and understand each other and then get to the ground, hit the ground walking. And so uh, the challenge is we need to double the efforts in growing the economy. Of course, also remember that um, there are some promises made in the manifesto. One of them is uh, to try and grow the economy in double digits and so on, meaning that perhaps we, we have to be running at four times the pace to recover uh, from where we are, you know. So that's it, yeah. The, we, we, the, the reference point is actually the manifesto at the end of the day, people will hold you to the manifesto of the of the party and the and the president, so that the work is cut out for everybody. But the good thing is that if you look at the um, reforms that have come as a result of the uh, you know the reorganization of the Federal Executive Council, creation of new ministries that are very exciting, the splitting of works from housing that creates a new vista entirely. The blue economy we've never had that before, you know. So. There's a lot of exciting things that we look forward to. And of course, I think that these, these ministries are fairly manned. I think the next thing that needs to be done very quickly is that we have about 1,200 per state house. And I believe that um, it's a good time for that streamlining of per state house to happen. Because now that we have new, new uh, ministries and so on, they need to be understood in terms of their remit. And so it's a time for them to sit down and share the parastate house and is sharing the parastate house probably wants to look at how can we prune them down from maybe 1,200 to maybe 700 or 600. Uh, you know, yeah, so basically that's the way forward because people are going to talk about that. That's what I've tried to say in some other forum that the, um, you know, the splitting of ministries is meant for focus, not to proliferate uh, government uh, bureaucracy. A good way to start, Dr. Fashwa, but I, I like to stay with debt issues, which remains very worrisome. And Mr. Wale Edu is saying that, no, government is not going to borrow to, to sort all of this out. And we know what's been happening with debt service uh, before now. How would you react to that? Let's start with that. Yeah, I think Mr. Edu has said the right thing uh, for now. In the short term, um, it's good for us to say, listen, you know, we're not going to be tanking on debt because we're not doing well in terms of uh, debt, to, debt to GDP and so on, uh, in terms of not, not necessarily debt to GDP, in terms of uh, debt service to revenue. So I think what he's trying to say is that focus for now is on growing revenue across the board, you know, because by blocking uh, loopholes here and there and ensuring we optimize our revenue, that's the focus for now. Uh, because I think when you're talking about just taking debts, it's a kind of lazy approach. To just say, oh, you know what, for every problem that comes up, let's just go and borrow money and plug it, <clears throat> which is what we saw um, in, in, in the past. You know, so there's a divergence from what has gone on in the past. Now we're going to be focusing on generating revenue, optimizing revenue without increasing tax rates and the burden on people, but ensuring that it's actually people who ought to pay that, and who are able to pay that will pay, uh, you know, revenue across the board. And we're talking about revenue across the board. It, it also pertains to revenues from, uh, revenues from, uh, uh, if you like, uh, natural resources, 
from the entire physical resources of the country, revenues from, uh, you know, of course, things like not only taxes, rents, rates, uh, duties, uh, for example, import duty, uh, fines, fees, whatever is due to government, uh, statutorily, we want to ensure that we bring as many of that in, because it's not going to be a, an easy walk in the park, really. You know? So uh, I think that's what they're saying. But of course, in the long term, my opinion, in the medium to long term, my opinion is that Nigeria still has a lot of leeway to borrow. Honestly speaking, it's a, it's a tough thing to say, but it's true. Um, when I look at Africa, I look at countries like Angola, Gabon, Egypt, Ethiopia, uh, many of these countries are doing 70, 80, 100 percent to GDP. But however, the only reason that we would not borrow in the, in the interim is because we want to assess where we are properly. And of course, we don't quite trust ourselves in terms of um, how well we can use those monies. But for a country, when you have plans for your people and you know that you're not where you're supposed to be, uh, you have to technically find and strategically find out you can leverage your balance sheet. What are we doing with 38% there to GDP when the standards are way high up? Some of those countries have come to advise us. The United States is way out. We know they can print dollars and pay back. The United Kingdom is over 110%. Uh, many of these other countries, Italy is about 170%. Uh, Japan is 261%. Uh, however, we're not saying we should just take money for the for the sake of it, but we have things to do. Capital projects, what have you, things that will make real impact on the country and get us going into the future. It's about taking the leap to development uh, going forward. So, uh, But in the interim, in the short term, yes, I understand that we shouldn't prioritize borrowing. The president was also firm talking about growing what we eat uh, and, if possible, producing what we use. And this has been on for some time, the Buy Niger, the campaign Buy Niger thing and, and all of that. Now, how better do you think we can, at this time, implement this, you know, from the top to bottom, like he's always said, so that the manufacturers, the business people can, of course, uh, benefit from this one way or the other? No, but bottom line, I think when you're talking about that, the point is that um, Nigeria is an open system. Eh? There's so much we haven't done that we need to do. I mean, we can't feed ourselves, we can't clothe ourselves. That means that you have tremendous opportunity in the textile sector. That means we have tremendous opportunity in the agri sector, including value addition to agriculture. I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's not what you need a PhD to understand, uh, that these are opportunities for us. I think what we need to do is to understand that um, we've basically been mediocre so far and there's a whole lot that we can do to achieve and, and achieve. It's, what, it's about what's called economic complexity, the fact that we need to add value to, 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 to what, we, uh, what we produce, that uh, f if we remain a uh, primary products producer, uh, we're not gonna get far, especially because our, our tastes are very sophisticated as a people, honestly speaking. And when you walk, look at the streets in Nigeria, you know, the kind of cars you see in this country, you would only find them in places like the United Kingdom, not even in the U.S. You know, I mean, one day I was on Wall Street looking for all of the SUVs. I didn't see so many of them. And if you see them, probably would be American made and all that. Uh, you don't even have those kind of cars given to public officials willy nilly. Many of the public officials actually uh, find their way to work by train or any other thing they don't. But so the ostentation and the code that we have seen is all we need to roll back, apart from improving and adding value to the goods and services we produce. Uh, can I, I'll tell you off the cuff, uh, Nigeria's import and export profile, which is quite embarrassing, that we have only two items that are in the billion dollar territory. That's crude oil and gas which we get about $57 billion every year, we have 50, just over 50 billion. However, out of that 50 billion, roughly 30% is our own. The remaining belongs to the international companies that actually produce and um, have the technical equipment and so on to do this. So we have crude oil and gas, as well as fertilizer. Those are the only things that give us billion dollars. Uh, in the next is you probably would find maybe ships that are sold as uh, wreckages or, or you know, cannibalized, you know, disused ships. Uh, which we can actually we can actually call that our ex you have things like uh, sesame seeds, oil seeds at about five hundred million dollars. But when you look at uh, um, 
uh, when you look at the flip side, the imports, we have about 20 imports that are in the billion, 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 billion dollars uh, territory. I mean, apart from the fact that we also import uh, petroleum, which is in about 20 billion every year uh, in dollars, you know, you have things like, uh, yeah, you have things like plastic, you have things like, uh, even things like fish. We import about a billion dollars worth of fish, a billion dollars worth of milk every year, not to talk of things like chemical, things like technology, technology, technological products are, when you add them together, they are some of our biggest importation, including things like cars, $3 billion worth of cars every year, you know, so you wonder how the balance of payment will ever balance. And I think that's where this comes from. It's not uh, just President Tinubu talking about this, President Buhari also worried about it. The point now is, okay, what are we going to do differently? But I think I like the lineup of uh, the team that have been put together. And I like the leader, the captain, as he called himself, uh, Pre President Tinumbu, who seems to have the right words and very philosophical, uh, from a very philosophical point of view, to drive this team towards uh, towards a winning point. So, uh, well, let's see how that goes. We need to actually ramp up on economic complexity in this country and begin to look at producing things we need ourselves, apart from adding value and being able to export things that are actually valuable. I mean, let's move away from uh, agricultural products. The only thing we export in this country now that's worthwhile is crude oil. And we know our challenges. We are not even meeting up to our, our quota. You know, I mean, we have about 1.8 million uh, barrels per day. We are able to do last month, it was 1.29. Uh, the month before we dropped below 1 million uh, but I think that um, I, I have a very good feeling about where we're heading in spite of the very uh, serious initial challenges. Mm. Let me take, let me just follow up that immediately before I go to my, my next question. Uh, you see government also have this renewed uh, vigor to fight all theft. Uh, we see that move by NNPCL and of course uh, the ministry is involved. I, I don't know what you want to say around that and if we could ramp up production and get more dollars to come in? Because many still say we need crude to diversify our economy. Indeed, yeah, many say that we need crude, but I think we need to be a bit more radical. Mm. Where, you see, it's about optimizing every resource that we have. It's about getting serious. I think that's something that happens to us as a people. When we achieve a little bit of success somewhere, and we see a little bit of money, we tend to lose uh, track and forget where we're coming from. And we tend to lose the picture of you know, the challenges that face us. So we start to celebrate too early. We need to understand how to defer gratification, how to defer celebration and all of that. So um, you look, we, 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 where we are right now, we should be doing crude oil, we should be, man, we should be producing 2.5, 3 million barrels if possible, and pumping it out. And of course, you know the challenge we have with our gas, President Tibu is very, very particular about gas. He's always talking about it, you know. Always talking at you know even I, when I met him that's what we was talking about gas 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 and of course we have the challenge with the Niger coup and all of that that's the strategic reason why Nigeria is actually getting involved very quickly and saying the right things but we cannot just fold our hands and watch that happen okay so whether it was gas but Nigeria is also known as a gas country with a little bit of oil that's the definition of Nigeria a gas country with a little bit of crude oil, you know? So crude oil is really not it. Even if we were going to optimize and go beyond the um, the minimum on our crude oil, remember, like I said, 30% is what we get. But again, you know, are we feeding ourselves? Are we producing our own clothes, our own shoes, in enough quantity to meet local demand and reduce importation? Of course, we have this perennial problem with uh, uh, foreign exchange and all what have you, you know, which we're never gonna get out of. Yeah, the way it looks, so we just need to uh, substitute some of those imports and by being uh, by by standing on our own and look at solid minerals. You know how, what, what's going on there. The last time around that I checked, we probably get almost nothing from from solid mineral because the the sector is still being organized. I hope that we're going to get to. I understand that the uh, former minister. I, I watched some of what he did, and that's a lamele He did he did quite well in trying to organize and also putting some emphasis on regional development of solid minerals in a way that we can capture. But of course, illegal gold mining still happens in places like Zamfara State. I still saw something on WhatsApp being shared around. And uh, But there's a lot for us to get. Colibrite and tantalite in, 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 in Joss area, in, 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 uh, in Benue, you know, and colibrite and tantalite, coltan, gets into every phone, every laptop in the world is in high demand. They can't get enough of it. 
and you find them in Nigeria, you know, rare earth in Nigeria, a barite, which is used in the oil sector, in, in just area, in up to Benue and all of those places. Nigeria is full of so many of these goodies. So we have to optimize that. What about tourism? We hardly even talk about tourism. And in Africa, I've been to a few countries like, like uh, Kenya, you know, like, like even Rwanda. If you wanted to go on the gorilla trail in Rwanda, you have to have three to four, five hundred dollars. If you wanted to just go to Nairobi National Park within Kenya, in right in Nairobi, you need at least a hundred dollars. And we're talking about um, you know, we're talking about a hundred thousand naira, almost a thousand hundred thousand naira, ninety thousand naira, uh, for you to do that just for a few hours, just for two or three hours. So these are areas that we've not explored in Nigeria. And, and so it, it, with the kind of seriousness I see in government, which is championed by the leader of government right now, uh, and I think that most of the ministers, if not all, are really ready to work. It's work, work, work. If we work hard enough, we're going to work hard and play hard. We're going to earn money uh, in this country and use it to grow this economy. So uh, it is what it is. You know, I think we should all brace up for um, you know, subsist, uh, you know, substantial growth in the economy and, of course, inclusive growth in the economy as well. Let's wrap up with this in one minute, uh, Dr. Fashua. Do you see that proper handshake between the fiscal and the monetary side this time around? And the, the debate has always gone on about what, what the relationship should be between fiscal and monetary. Should they complement each other? Should they see each other? Should, or should they back up each other in a way that if one falters, the other one picks up? And how much should they interfere in each other's affair? Or should they just be totally independent on each, of each other? The debate continues to go on in the realm of economics. Where they say if you put two economists in one room, they'll come up with three different opinions. You know, we probably would never agree, but the examples of the, the experience of the recent past shows that monetary policy has made too much incursion into the fiscal space. Uh, however, I must say this, and it's very critical, that, you know, what do we expect? You know, you, we don't expect monetary policy to go folding its hand and sleeping when the fiscal sector collapses. I mean, in the last uh, administration, what we found was a scenario where the minister will complain about there's no money, no revenue. We were running 6 to 7% uh gdp in terms of uh, revenue collection but the, the political will was not there to reform the fiscal sector to ensure that we got uh revenues in there were too many uh you know rate waivers going on as well you know there were too many waivers going on and so on but i think that we have the uh the the the, the, the will to get that done and of course uh the fiscal and uh, tax commission i mean uh, committees there uh, I, i'm a member but i'm not speaking on their behalf uh I'm speaking uh, to you just as a normal, uh, ordinary citizen of Nigeria right now. So um, I think that um, a, a strategic alliance should occur between the two going forward. The monetary policy cannot go to sleep. Um, you know, having the instrument of money supply in a, an economy, they cannot go to sleep if there's a problem with the fiscal sector. But where we are right now is that the fiscal sector must wake up. Enough already of all of the slackness around, you know, like I said before, it's not only taxes, it's about rents and rates and, 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 and fees and fines and, and levies and everything that is due to government must be hauled in, if, you know, and less of the waivers and all of the slackness around collection. And of course, so much leakages, many of the government-owned enterprises, the last government tried to rein them in, but they couldn't, you know. <laughs> many of them have even ignored the TSA, a lot of things are going on ultra virus that shouldn't be going on, you know, government-owned enterprises collecting money on behalf of Nigeria and ensuring that they spend almost everything on themselves. The last government tried to put some, some of some of them are supposed to pay 50% minimum, you know, and then use the rest of 25% as the case may be, you know. So I think that uh, remember that the president is an accountant and, of course, uh, in running legal state... Okay, I don't know if I've seen that. In running Go legal ahead, state, you're there. he had a lot Go of ahead. experience. Yes, and I think that's also part of the reason why they were thinking of uh, maybe the FRS and the customs should be merged because in the United Kingdom, the HMRC is Majesty's Revenue and Custom. They always see each other. No, whether they are merged or not, what needs to happen is that um, um, you know the customs to see the FRS, the Inner Revenue Service or the National Revenue Service or whatever it is we call, and of course they should that should also see the CAC, which is the Corporate Affairs Commission. And that's they, all of this you see the banks. In the United Kingdom, you cannot run a company account in a given year, except you bring your company house returns in January. You must submit, otherwise your account will be frozen or even closed. 
And, you know, and of course, you cannot get your company house returns except you show a, a evidence that you have paid your taxes, even if it was minimum taxes, and that you have remitted the national insurance and the payee of your staff. So here we are in Nigeria, people collect, you know, companies collect national uh, housing fund, they collect national health insurance, and they just sit on it, they collect pay as you earn, they refuse to remit to the government. Come on, that's it's, it's, it's high, what they call high crime in other societies. So these are some of these um, areas that needs to be plugged in Nigeria. And I think we just need to get serious uh, going forward. But I think that uh, the fiscal uh, policy committee with um, and the fiscal fiscal policy going forward will be able to do a whole lot more than it did in, in recent past. Of course, the goal is 18% of, um, of GDP in the next uh, couple of years. And I think we should even work um, much faster than that. I must thank you so much, Dr. Tokwe Fashua there for your insight into the topic of this, because do enjoy the rest of your day. You're welcome, cheers.